God. I'm taking time out. This is my time out. <laughs> this will clear my brain, sort of. Just drove all over town trying to find the part. It was on the wall. It's the final stop of a solenoid before the juice goes to the pump in the ground. I unhooked the pump outside by the well. Flick the breaker switch back on that box. Still sounded like a bunch of ball bearings were going off into it. All right, it's got to be that thing. Everything's closed. Can't get an electrician, obviously. Or a plumber. All the animals are running out of water. Of course, right? <laughs> Drove all over town, looked for that part, couldn't find it. Found one in Nanaimo. Drove all the way over there, grabbed it, brought it back, put it on. Still making the same sound. Of course it is. Still out of water. So maybe it's the uh, the only place with electricity that it goes to a, a thing before the pressure tank on the ground. It's looking like I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna have to wait who knows how long to get an electrician. That sucks so bad. Anyways, clearing my head, time out. Time out. And somebody's spinning around over top of my home in a plane. I'm going to go shoot it. <laughs> All right, here we go. So many beautiful places to fly around. Why over top of the house? This is titled, Eating My Words. Dear Steve, as I wrote you in the past, I was a heckler on the channel. Oh, really? I thought you were all insane wanting attention. Then the Edgar story came out and made me remember all of my encounter. I was approached from behind at 5.30 a.m., still dark, about TH board the boat. Okay, about to board the boat to go across the lake to get my truck when I heard a grunt. I thought, it's a bear. So I slowly turned. Keep in mind, this is Buckhorn Lake State Park. And the cabin I was in was a rental across from my step-uncle's property. He always said there were monkeys in the forest behind the cabins. Anyway, I slowly turned and this thing I noticed was glowing yellow eyes. Then the rest. It was a female. The skin was grayish yellow and she wore fur around her ankles and wrist. The breasts were hairless and she was around six to seven feet. Oh, sorry, six foot seven inches. And looked to be looked to weigh 250 pounds, sort of skinny for the tallest. She had markings on her body. She had no clothing on her body anywhere. She had some hair, but not what everyone says a Bigfoot has. Well, my stepdad came to the door and saw her with the spear. And he had a rifle leaned against the door facing. And he shot in front of her. She slowly turned her head and had a look like bring it when all at once the bushes behind me rattled and i turned like now what here's xena princess warrior from hell now what and as i turned to look the female jumped and i'm talking 12 feet up and 25 feet out and she disappeared in mid air but as she jumped there was silver sparkly thing that started flashing like fireflies but they were silverish white looking finally got my sidearm a nine mil s c c y short nose with a reddit sight out and my head started ringing and whatever was in the bush was gone please don't use my real name you can call me buckwheat on here if you're interested i can show you the hide of a p1 of a 137 pound Kai wolf that had deformed hind legs. They had thumbs or thumb like nubs. All right, there you go. Lacking punctuation, no big, de no big deal. I wouldn't expect somebody who heckled other people earlier would be scared to be in heckled, right? And that's a weird story, man. We've never heard anything like a description like that before of either. 137 pound wild canine is a very, very, very heavy canine, especially if it's a wolf. I think the largest wolf I ever caught out of a lot of wolves was only 132 pounds or something. 
and that was a monster. They're very lean. Wild canines are very lean. They do a lot of running around, right? They don't walk like, uh, 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 like our fat domestic dogs. They glide. They're so light. Anyway, send out the pictures. That's a bizarre, bizarre experience. What's this one? Okay. This is a little older. From a, somebody I'm in contact with quite often. Titled Edgar. That's not the first time that I've heard of this sort of thing. My assessment is this. Edgar was abducted. That entity, the Sasquatch, was working with those in a nearby ship. This is where the whole subject splits into two camps. The ones who primarily live here on the planet with some moving, using portals or other means, and those serving the agenda of those so-called, or, or sorry, of those called the Greys, which are themselves genetically engineered. The speed and distance covered by these craft is unfathomable. I can go over the technical details of how that is even possible later. The texts on the phone were intentionally turned on, and he should have just hunkered down and done the screenshots. The phone companies worked closely with intelligence, and they were the ones who wiped the data clean. No doubt. It is a repeated pattern when the clothes are put back on wrong and some are missing. Nothing new there. Edgar might have had medical procedures and possibly implants put in place. His body went through hell while he was on board the craft. It is also another aspect that this that is prevalent in abductions psychiatrists are untrust are untrustworthy generally you have to work with one that has experience in abduction cases i hate it when this shit happens it pisses me off i have had many come to me in my capacity as a researcher asking for help and though this is not my area of expertise i provide an ear for them and suggest next steps prominent families having this shit happen to them I really don't like getting involved directly with abductions and getting involved with prominent families is even lower on my list, but it happened. This is not an effing joke. These missing people, you can see why it happens. The Sasquatch, like people who do these things, in my opinion, are not the same as those who live here most of the time. They are the ones portrayed as pure evil. It is a point of distinction. I'm sure that some of those who are here normally are also hating us. But with those who tend to go back and forth to craft, UFOs, it is all hatred and evil. I've noticed this and have had deep discussions about it with others who are pretty well researched. We are in non-formal agreement on this concept. We all leave it open for another explanation, but so far there has not been one. I've read detail, detailed abduction experiences hundreds of times and of those who witnessed abduction. I've read many accounts of Sasquatch-like creatures leaving UFOs in remote areas. To me, this encounter of Edgar's is pretty cut and dried, and I am pissed it had happened to him. NORAD tracks everything. My guess is a small unit of military intelligence is aware of this incident, and they probably ran interference with the phone company to erase all traces of it. But those on the craft made sure that this information, the texts, go to Edgar. Little bastards. Someone opened up someone opened up this abduction stance here on the planet at some point. I think an agreement is in play. It's probable. We all deserve better, especially Edgar. Now you might have a different view of those entities coming into our nuclear facilities. Do you think that regular Sasquatch give a shit about these installations? Reread my article on UFO and our nuclear weapons. Given the incredible actions they have perpetrated on our nuclear technology and weapon centers, it fits that these large, hairy entities are working with them and may even have been created specifically to do so. That is a question for one of the Sasquatch elders, don't you think? Get some clarity, perhaps, or be bullshitted, but I think you are capable of that discernment. Edgar went into a career field not knowing what kind of shit he was in store for. He has to be very careful. All right. And then here is the copied article. Well, I'll read it. Tree Huge Nuclear Connection Project NCP Paper 
NCP-10 nuclear historical correlative correlative research by Robert Duvall. Do UFO respond to our political will in the arena of nuclear weapons? Is it inevitable to compare the onset of prolific UFO activity of the last 60 or so years to our acquiring nuclear weapons capability? In making that comparison, it is essential to realize the possibility that an historical relationship could exist and to at least perform a study to make that determination. This paper's primary goal is the introduction of the historical correlative concept and represents a small sample of such a study. This paper also provides topic organizational structure, allowing the data to be collected in a fashion that is easily applied to historical research. Although much progress has been made towards firming this approach, not all topics have received correlative attention as of this writing. Why choose military sighting data? The significance of military sightings is embedded in the high quality of the observation and documentation, the the consistency of the types of activity, and most important, the notice taken by the chain of command. Engaging the military of a state is the most direct way of getting attention, all the way to the top. It is apparent that the direct contact with leaders of states today is rare or probably non-existent. Any sighting at or near to a state's capital should therefore be treated as extremely significant. Most normal UFO activity occurs in fashions not meant to attract attention such as in the guise of night or in remote areas, or so brief in length as to make it nearly impossible to ascertain anything from the sighting. When discovered, UFO usually end any observation by leaving quickly. Yet, military engagement is direct, specific in type and location, often having duration indicating the intent to acquire full attention. Repetition of specific activities related to military could very well be attempts to relate or demonstrate clear superiority. Concern over policy slash decisions and, with the more aggressive activity, a conveyance of warnings. That cannot be ignored as a distinct possibility. This is the case with UFO activity related directly to nuclear technology, weaponry, and the associated political prowess. What does this have to do with a possible historical relationship? Evidence supports this relationship. The location and the timing of many of these sightings are coincident with historical events within the related realm, whether that is conventional conflict or specific aspects of nuclear policy and military militarization. This does not apply just to the U.S. Oh, and did I not copy everything? Shit, probably not. I'm such a dumbass. Sometimes I'll tell you what. Hold on a second. I might be able to copy this. I'll copy a link to this. I'll find it in the inbox and I'll put it in the I'll put it in the video description. Okay, guys. That's what I'm gonna do. Interesting. This man's got a lot. He's done a lot of digging over 30 years of intense digging. A lot of people. have done a lot of digging. Now, what's next? Who's next? A lot of people wonder what I might be after by going and meeting up with people and possibly possibly getting in contact with these beings. Here's what I'm doing. And here's why here at home, where I go, I think I've, I'm managing to keep it pretty neutral. Meaning I haven't been chased away, like seriously tormented. And I'm and I'm and I'm down with that. When I go into the woods, I want to go hunting. I want to go look for sheds. I want to go exploring, camping. I want to go remote. I want to go fishing. I want to walk a river in peace and zen out. You know what I mean? I want to do what I love to do, unmolested, untormented, and no anxiety. So, would I'm wondering maybe possible? I'd be well. How come you don't go talk to these beings out in your backyard? I'm not into it. I'm not into the possible. I don't know enough. I don't think. Well, I'm getting there. I am not willing to gamble, throw the dice of possibly creating something that's not going to leave me alone in my special areas here. I'm not ready to do that yet without enough, without more knowledge. Now, 
would I be willing to go somewhere else with people who have already established that sort of contact? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, right? And then go down there, feel it out, see what's up, see what's up with these people, listen to their stories, and then take it from there. It's almost like, well, I'm pretty cool here where I love to do what I do here. Maybe I'll go down there and throw the dice down there if Matt makes any kind of a difference. We'll see, whatever. But either way, I'm going somewhere. All right, I hope I made sense with that. What else? Just so you know, um, right now, before I make confirmation of which direction I'm going, I am waiting on, right now I am waiting on a reply which will take me directly to the other side of the ocean and maybe even Russia. An extreme possibility. And if I get the green light, I'm waiting for the reply and plans. If I get the green light, I'll be leaving within the week. Just so you know. <laughs> Even she have said that, whatever. Either way, if that doesn't pan out, then I'm going south. All right. And I'm going to find some shit out for all of us. Now, how many people, how many of you guys are doing that? You know, there's a lot of people email me hate mail. Bitch at me for not doing enough, from doing it the wrong way. Well, what are you doing? What are you doing while you're sitting on your fat ass watching me complaining about me not doing something right? What are you doing? What are you bringing to the table? Right? It's funny how some people could complain. But meanwhile, they ain't doing shit. Here's another one from one of our favorite law enforcements. Kick-ass dudes from Cujo. Fruit thrown at my truck as a reply. Steve Cujo here. Been a while since I've dropped you a line. I'm not deciding, but something weird did happen to me. I'm currently working three to four graveyard shifts a week on a protection detail for a billionaire in the Santa Monica Mountains in Southern California. 12-hour shifts, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Oh my God, that would drive me bunkers. I don't know how you do it. Large estate on top of a ridge and somewhat isolated, but you can see other estates in the area. Not heavily forested in the immediate area of the estate, lots of open space. There are large areas of thick trees close to a state about a quarter mile away. The other homes are spaced about a half mile apart. Some homes are closer to the tree area than others. You can see the ocean from the client's estate about five miles away. Anyway, I still listen to your show every night at work. One show I was listening to involved a man who kind of summoned a being. I think he just thought it but he may have said out loud something to the effect of, I'm here, show yourself to me. Something like that. I can't remember the exact words. After that, the beings let him know they were there. Anyway, a few nights ago, about 3 a.m., I was sitting in my truck, taking a break, eating my lunch, and watching your channel. It was an episode involving mind speak. So I did something stupid again. I don't know if you remember the frequency and tone experiment I did last year, but... That scared the crap out of me, and I said I wouldn't be doing anything stupid like that again. Well, I kind of did. As I was watching and listening to your show, I said out loud, not really loud because I didn't want the client to hear, Hey, I know you're out there. I know you know I'm armed, but I'm not here to hurt you. I'm just protecting the man in the huge white and glass house from any bad humans or animals that would try to hurt him. If you hear me, can you let me know that you did? It's important to me that you know I'm not here to hurt you. My truck was parked outside his gate in a cul-de-sac. Lots of trees and bushes all around, but not heavily forested. And anything on the client's property is well-maintained, and gardeners come up every day to trim things up and cut things back. I work in plain clothes, no uniform. I'm always armed with a Sig Sauer P220, 45 in my hip, covered by a light jacket, and I keep my SOCOM 16 308 with a 20 round mag in my truck just in case. Not supposed to with California armed guard laws, but I'm all alone up there. And with about a 20 minute police response, time if I'm lucky. So I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6, if you know what I mean. That's a good one. That's a good, I'm going to steal that quote. Well, nothing happened. I went about my business, did my perimeter checks, etc. About an hour later, I sat back in my truck and was having some coffee with my thermos. I said out loud again, Well, I guess you guys aren't around. 
But if you are, can you please let me know if you got my message? I don't know what I was expecting, but did not want to see one. I continued drinking my coffee, and I heard the sound of something soft hitting the roof of my truck. Something small. I stopped mid-sip and thought to myself, No, maybe something fell off one of the big trees. Then it happened again. One small, soft thump. I got out of my truck and looked on the roof of my truck and on the ground, but didn't see anything. I also noticed I wasn't currently under a tree or a bush of any kind. I got back in my truck and tried to rationalize what I had heard. Thought to myself, maybe it was just a stick or something that fell off a tree and the breeze carried it over to my truck. Twice. Right. Soon, as though... Soon as I... Th as soon as I thought this... It sounded like someone threw a handful of whatever was hitting the roof of my truck against the rear window. Not just tossed, but threw. Not super hard, but hard enough to get my attention like, here is your answer, idiot. I jumped out of my truck, flashlight on and in my hand, hand on my gun, but still holstered and nobody was there. Then I saw it was hitting my truck. Little oval orange fruits, about two inches long. I enclosed a picture of one of these. There were about five of them in the bed of my truck. They were not there when I started my shift. I immediately realized what was going on. I took my hand off my gun and I said, Okay, thank you for letting me know you heard me. I looked around with my flashlight and didn't see anyone or anything. Also, there were no other fruits like that in the cul-de-sac or on any of the bushes or trees in that area that I could see. Didn't smell the bad smell, no feeling of dread, but it was very quiet. Thing is, it's usually very quiet up there unless the wind is blowing. It wasn't an unusual quietness. And that's it. I was kind of freaked out by the whole thing. Still am, but not scared. I feel better though knowing they know why I'm up there with my weapons. Don't have proof, but I don't need it. Have a good one, my friend. Attached is the picture of the fruit. Have no idea what it is. Maybe you or one of your listeners can tell me. Shit, I don't... It looks like a frickin'... Oblonged orange. Okay, how big is that? Well, we'll do the regular picture right there. Let's share it that way. It's easier, right? So there's the photo example of fruit. I hope maybe we can get an idea of the ratio size with whatever that fruit's sitting on. It doesn't look overly big, I don't think, does it? No, it's not that big. Oh, that's on the shifter of the console, isn't it? All right. Now I'll zoom in on it. Does anybody know what that fruit is? If so, where does it grow? How does it grow? Tree, bush, on the ground? Clumps? Singly? Where? Who knows? Comment in the comment section below, right? Appreciate you chiming in again, Cooch. Glad you're still with the living and upright and doing good, man. Um, it's funny you say you're doing... I wonder if... If somebody wanted to... Wanted to, wanted to uh, off topic, but I'm thinking if somebody wanted to assassinate that dude in the house you're watching, you're sitting at the end of his driveway by the gate. I mean, shit, people can do seven, eight hundred, nine hundred yard shots like nothing with the right rifle. Wouldn't that be too easy to do, really? Anyway, my mind battles. I'm pitching somebody's a target, and I am a hunter. <laughs> and there's a security guy at the end of the gate. Well, I think I'm just going to sneak on into that ridge over there and wait for him to hit the window and pop him. Anyway. Silly brain. My silly brain. I appreciate you sending that in, man. Be safe out there. Be safe. And send us whatever else you want, whenever you want, for sure. Who's next? What's next? How long is this? This is pretty long. I'm going in. Tell you what, this is a good break for my brain. I'm about ready to have a fit outside with no water here. Sabe encounter on the high plains. Hey Steve, my name is Jimmy. I'm from a small town in the Oklahoma Panhandle area. Steve, I'm not going to say exactly where this happened because I don't want a bunch of investigators poking around and disturbing people's cattle or running over people's crops. Plus, if there are Sabe in the area, I'd like people to leave them alone. Steve, from the stories I've heard from you and others, it is best not to get these beings upset. Because if you mess with them, they will mess with you. 
Steve, I want to also thank you for this platform where people like me who did not ask for their encounter can finally tell what happened to them without people saying they are crazy or making up a wild story or on drugs. My encounter happened a long time ago when I was nine years old, going on ten. Steve, this happened in the first part of May. It was the first Saturday after we had been let out of school for the summer. I had talked my friend Rick into going out and looking for empty pop bottles that people had thrown out of the cars into the ditch when they came into town. Where we lived, the soil was sandy, so most of the bottles that were thrown out were unbroken. At that time, you could get some money for returning unbroken bottles to the store. So, Rick and I started early on Saturday, looking. We started early, just after sunrise, at about 6.30 a.m. We looked and found about three bottles, but I wanted to get some more. So we talked about it, and I decided to walk out to our junkyard. This is about two miles south of town on a good dirt road. That was kept in good shape by the county. Steve, not many people were working these fields that day because it had just rained the day before, so it was too wet to work. On days it rained, people would work on things at their house or barn, so there was no one out that day. So my friend and I started walking to the junkyard, and right off the bat, we came across some giant footprints. These prints looked just like a giant human barefoot prints, but were very long wide and much deeper and the tracks were leaving there were two sets of prints one set were bigger than the other than the other but both of the prints were much bigger than normal when i saw these footprints i instantly had a feeling of dread and fear i asked rick what in the world could make footprints like that he jokingly said bigfoot and then started laughing at me for getting scared rick said don't you know that Bigfoot only lives in the mountains? So we busted it off and kept going towards the junkyard. Steve, I need to explain the area that the junkyard was in. There was an open field before you would get into some hilly prairie. Steve, these these hills were not that big, but this hills, but these hills were big enough to hide some big creatures. So, get back to the story. As we were walking, I noticed that the footprints were headed right out to the junkyard. So I said to Rick, maybe we should go back to town. I said that these footprints were making me very nervous and I wanted to go back. Rick just made fun of me again and said, let's keep going. So we kept going. Rick stopped walking for a second because he had found an old wooden radio that had fallen off of someone's truck that they were taking to the junkyard. So we said, why don't you keep walking out toward the junkyard and I'll catch up with you in a couple of minutes. So I keep walking. Once we were about 60 yards apart, that is when I noticed the black dots on the sand hill about a half a mile beyond the junkyard. At first I thought there were some cattle, but something in my gut said, danger, go back. So I turned back to Rick and told him to run back to town because I had a feeling that something was not right about these two dots, especially because of the strange footprints. When I turned back around, these dots were much were now much closer. No joke, these things looked like they had gotten a half a mile closer, and to me, in about 30 seconds. Now, instead of looking like cattle, they were looking like buffalo. This really scared me because I had heard that buffalo could be dangerous. So this time I really yelled at Rick to run. And Rick did turn and run. When I turned again, these things were closer to me, maybe 200 yards. I could not believe they came up on me that fast. Because they got there so fast, I really didn't have a way to outrun them back to town. So I was stuck with nowhere to run or hide. I was in a mess. I thought they were, I thought they were going to charge me and try to stomp me to death. Then something unbelievable happened. These things reared up onto their back legs and started walking toward me like a man. They were huge. The bigger one looked about eight feet tall and about four feet at the shoulder and at least 600 pounds. The shorter one looked about six foot five and about 400 pounds. I was terrified and frozen in place. They walked up to me with about, within about 60 yards and then stopped. 
I was staring at them. They were staring back. When I looked at them, they had very long arms and very wide shoulders, huge upper bodies, and were reddish brown with three to four inch long hair all over the bodies. Steve, when I first saw them, I thought they looked like giant gorillas, but when they got closer, they looked more like giant, hairy men. While we were staring at each other, the big one smiled and said to me in my mind, Hey, little boy, why don't you, why don't you come out and see us? And at the same time, raised his arm and motioned me to come and see him. Steve, this voice in my mind sounded very friendly but I was too terrified to move. He asked me again to come out and see him. And this time he said, don't be afraid, I won't hurt you. He said, I am friendly. Just like the man who has a white beard and dresses in red that all the boys and girls like. Steve, I know that sounds way out there, but I promise that is what this being said to me. Steve, I think these beings know us very well and are not gorillas but very intelligent men of some kind. So, getting back to the encounter, I wanted to run at this time, even though I knew didn't have much of a chance, but I was frozen in place. About that time, the two of them started moving closer, and I knew they had me, and I said to myself, Jimmy, you are dead. They got closer and closer, and everything went into slow motion. Then the smaller one grabbed me by my feet and threw me under its arm and started to squeeze me against his side. It was very strong. And even though I struggled, I couldn't get away. While I was struggling to get away, I don't know how, but I could hear them talking to each other with mind speak. They were very happy they caught me and were congratulating each other on a successful hunt. While this was going on, I was being squeezed so much I could not breathe and passed out. See, I don't know how exactly what happened, but the next thing I knew I was getting, I was sitting in a chair. Hold on a minute. Steve, I don't, ex I don't know exactly what happened, but the next thing I knew, I was sitting in a chair with some bright spotlights shining in my face, and I knew someone was on the other side of the spotlights, but I could not see them. I started asking this person, is this the end of my life? Is this it? Is this all the time I've got? And a voice said, no, I'm going to send you back. I asked, are you going to help me get away from those things that grabbed me? And the voice said, yes, I will help you, but you're going to have to fight with all you got to get your freedom. So the next thing you know, I was waking up. I was still under the small one's arm, and I started kicking and punching the small one in its side. It was like kicking a wall, but I didn't stop. I guess I got his attention because it once again grabbed me by the leg and held me out way away and held me out away from it straight armed. Steve, I was being held upside down. I felt like a rabbit that had been caught by a hunter. But even at that, I kept fighting for all I was worth. The small one brought me closer to his face and I got a really good look at his face. In the face, the small one didn't have a beard. It kind of had a red peach fuzz on his face and his face looked very human in fact the small one looked just like a native american indian white tan skin the small one also had glowing red eyes looking at his face really shocked me and i started screaming this seemed to make the small one very happy to make me scream the small one had a big smile on his face and seemed to be laughing all during this time i was still kicking and squirming Next thing I know, the small one handed me to the big one, and he held me upside down and brought me close to his face, and the big one looked a little different than the small one. The big one's skin was a lighter color. Its skin was gray, and it had a beard and had a face that looked like a white man, but much bigger. Steve, I, I bought... Uh, typo, hold on. Steve, I thought, bought, I bought of these Sabe had heads. Okay, I gotta skip a couple words. Steve, these Sabe had heads that were three times as big as ours. They both had teeth that looked like ours. When the big one held me closest to his face, I started screaming again. And it seemed to also make him laugh. Finally, 
I keep screaming. Steve, I didn't think it was even, it was ever going to get away. Sorry. I didn't think I was ever going to get away. There's a bunch of typos. No biggie. We'll get through it. Then I remembered something that my mom told me. She said, if you're ever in trouble, pray to Jesus. So Steve, I cried out, help me, Jesus. Nothing happened for a second. And then I heard another voice say, put him down and let him go. The big one that had me by the leg responded by saying to the voice, no, I want to keep him. I like to make him scream. But the other voice said louder and with more authority, put him down and let him go. So the bigger one kind of gently tossed on the ground. When I was free, I got up and started to run. But I was curious who had made the big one let me go. So I turned back around and I saw another much bigger Sabe. The sight of him really scared me. But I was very thankful to be alive and grateful to be let go. So I asked the really big one who let me go. And he looked at me and said, I made them let you go. So I said, thank you. I do not know where the really big one came from that made them let me go. But after many years of thinking, the big one must have been the other one's father. That's why when he said to, to let me go, and they did. Steve, this really big sabe was gigantic. And I mean the other two looked little. I'd say he was at least 11 feet tall and looked like a very heavy set man. His shoulders must have been five or six feet wide. His arms were massive. His legs were massive and his stomach was massive. Steve, I would say he was easy 2,000 pounds if not more. Steve, he was also reddish brown and looked like a 12 foot tall sumo wrestler. After Let Me Go, I ran back to town, not looking back until I made it to the edge of town. Then I looked back, and I saw all three go back the direction they came from. Once again, they were walking on all fours. And from that distance, they once again kind of looked like cattle. I think these Sabe are very talented. All their communications with me were through mind speak. It seemed like they could make themselves look different. They, they could cloak because I did not see the big one until he made the other ones let me go. Anyway, when Rick got back to town, we were scared to death. We made it to Rick's house, started to tell his family about what happened, but his dad made us quit. He told us we had to let, we had to let, sorry, and told us we had let our imagination get the best of us and that it never happened. He also told us, told us nobody would ever believe us. So I keep this memory buried until I finally started listening to you on your YouTube channel and then it all came back. Steve, I'm sorry this is such a long one, but I'm glad to finally tell somebody about it. Thank you, Jimmy. P.S. The Sabe did smell very bad, but I did not smell them until they had a hold of me because the wind was at our back. Steve, I'm going to keep you and your family in my prayers and thank you again. Well, how many of you are going, holy shit? And how many of you are going, he's on crack? All right. I think the truth is going to make all of us, the, the ultimate truths are going to make us all freak out. I'm quite certain about that, don't you think? That's one hell of a story to just decide to wake up in the morning and make up, isn't it? And it's not the first time we've heard of kids being picked up. Uh, what was that man's name? John Blot, I think, is the guy who was looking at the turtle. Turned around, the thing's right behind him, picked him up. Looked at him. That man was carried away in British Columbia. Had a Toba Inlet right over there. There's been a lot of hands-on experiences, that's for sure, right? What do I hope to get from this? From listening to all the people, you know, ultimately... I just want to know. There's so much I want to know. Not just in this topic, but a lot of, there's a lot of knowledge I want. And it's 100% intentionally being kept from us without a doubt. That's where I'm in that frustrating position right now, being frustrated with that. But I would like to know, it's like grizzly bears. 
I know where there's probably going to be a grizzly bear, what time of year there's probably going to be a grizzly bear, where I probably shouldn't go or where I should go if I want to see one, where I'm probably going to bump into one. Signs, the signs, the type of year. I know everything when it comes to, say, grizzly bears and how to avoid them if I need to avoid them and I don't want to bump into them and have a confrontation. Or if I want one, I know how to find them. But I know how to stay safe and respect them. I think it's only fair that people, and I am a passionate outdoors person. It's made me who I am and it's gave me life. And it, and I've already shared my position on how I feel about people who were like-minded, who had it all taken away from them. It's not fair and that makes me angry because I give a shit. So I think hopefully with this one topic, hopefully sooner than later, I can, we can get to a place where we can accurately predict or know where this might go down and when that would be very handy you know what i mean and i don't give a fly and shit about how many people don't take this subject seriously who cares it's very real been there done that seen it end of story now my mouth's not going to shut up laugh all you want But I think it's only fair that we are allowed to have the knowledge of exactly what truly is going on here so that we have the fair crack at making the right choices for us or our family, friends, children. It's not too much to ask, right? But the shitty deal is it doesn't, it doesn't end here. This is just, like I've said a million times, this is the easiest topic to prove to the planet that we are being royally screwed over and in a big way. In a big way. You know, uh, um, it was brought to my attention that when Dr. Malba Ketchum was coming forward with the, when the DNA studies were all coming forward, it got the Vatican's attention. And the Vatican had a lot to do with jumping in there to stop that information from flowing to the world. The Vatican. What a bunch of evil sons of bitches they are, huh? They are dark. Dark. That's probably ground zero for dark. Did I just piss somebody off? Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, very, very dark, Those that group of individuals at the, the so-called top, that disgusting, gross food chain. What's the word in the street? If they were to sell all just the, all just the gold and the real estate they have, there would be one person on the planet in a position to be in, of poverty. If all that was shared with the world evenly, whatever. It's kind of funny when you see those sons of bitches, right? I don't give a shit who it is. When you see a human being dressed in some kind of cloak, walking along like they are, I don't know what they think they are. It's kind of funny. I mean, think about it. You watch those sons of bitches, the Pope and all his little buddies, whatever they call them, cardinals and shit, and they're all walking around like there's some kind of, I don't know what they think they are. And we're just human beings, every single one of us. I don't give a shit what anybody thinks about my stance on that. Tell you what, you, let's just say you grew up with Bobby Smith down the road. You played hockey with each other. You played baseball, football, you chased girls, whatever. Talk just like the way we're talking right now. And the next thing you know, he's an adult and he's walking around like... <laughs> I can't even mimic them. <laughs> They're just walking and carrying themselves like they are not even human. Maybe they aren't. Maybe they aren't. Good God, if you put one of those idiots in my space right here, I promise you, I would kick them in the balls so freaking hard it would make their voice change and snap them out of that trance they're in. Wherever they think they are and whoever they think they are, I would snap them out of it real quick. Like I said before, I would love to take all these absolute evil douchebags. Just give me one at a time. I don't give a shit. Ten at a time. And I'll take them up into the middle of frickin' nowhere in those beautiful Rocky Mountains. Kick them into that, stand them up in that meadow all by himself. And stand them there in, in, their, in their underwear. Let's have, a, let's have a good solid look at you now. Who are you? Hmm? <laughs> You're nothing. You're just a human being like me. You're nothing. There's a bit of a battle. How's that for a, a battle for an Easter weekend battle? <laughs> Shitting on the Pope and all his little frickin' loser buddies and all the dark, evil, filthy shit they've caused to human beings on this planet. 
anyway. Debatable, right? Debate? That's fine. Somebody has somebody says something you don't agree with? Oh well. That's fine. That's fair. That's great. Who cares? Let them speak. Listen to them. But if you want to insult them and make them shut up, well, you, then you're looking for a fight. Right? I don't try to shut anybody up. I don't try to stop anybody from speaking. But I definitely have a I definitely have a a firm position when it comes to people who try to stop all of you from talking. Then you're going to see some attitude, right? Which you should. And that's, it's funny how many people refer to me some as a tough guy. <laughs> what, is that how society is now? If you don't take shit from douchebags, that means you're a tough guy? That should just mean you're a normal human being, as far as I'm concerned. None of you should be taking shit from anybody. None of you should be allowing anybody to, to uh, suppress you in any way. Tell him to go fuck himself, man. That's not being a tough guy. That's just being a free human being. And you should, I would hope that more people, after listening to this channel, are carrying them that are carrying themselves that way more and more daily. That's what society needs. For everybody to stop putting up with the bullshit. Right? So anyway, once again. As we motor along on this crazy, absolute crazy ride, the amount of information that we've pulled in here from all the people, the amount of information pulled in just here is absolutely amazing. So, would it be fair to say at this stage again, game to all of you, can't you at least agree on one thing for sure at this stage of the game? That if you're some asshole in front of a lens still talking about dermal ridges and mid-tarsal breaks and pulling themselves to the forest, you're a fucking idiot. Prove me wrong. You are an absolute fucking idiot. Right? Hey, anybody goes on that Bigfoot cruise, make sure you ask that doctor fly it out when, you got, when he's up on there on the stage. Ask him what it feels like to absolutely go after and annihilate the life of a professional kind honest woman ask him that question for me would you if you're gonna if you're going on that little bigfoot boat ride ask him that in a public on a public uh on his little public platform there while he's talking about mid tarsal breaks ask him what it's like to be a filthy dirty sleazy son of a bitch who will intentionally go after and ruin assist to ruin the life of an honest woman hmm? ask him that make sure somebody asks him that question it's just an honest question. That's not being that's not being bad. It's just an honest question. Looking for an honest answer. Right? Anyway. Alright, there's my uh my time out. Now I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go get I got a water tank, this is a square water tank so here. I'm gonna go get one of those in the box of my truck and take down my buddies. Pump some water into it it's for the horses, for the chickens. <laughs> Then maybe I'll go hit the chainsaw for a bit. Son of a bitch. Then I, now I'm, I'm going to have to go take everything to the freaking laundromat to wash everything before Sarah gets home. I could got one more day. Day after tomorrow, I think. So I'm going to have to do that tomorrow. Laundromat. Mm. Anyway. Share my story at howtohunt.com. Keep it flowing. Speak out loud and quit being scared of people. All right? Quit being scared of people, and if you know somebody's done some dirty, filthy shit, call them out. Call them out. All right? And that's not being mean. It's the right thing to do. It's them that did it. You didn't do it. So why are you scared to call them out in public about what they did that had a negative effect on you, your family, or your community? Right? Yeah, listen to me. I must have had a frustrating couple days. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Share my story at howtohunt.com. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I hope everybody has a super awesome duper Easter long weekend. I'll be back.